So this is going to be part probably one of three on arrow upgrades to the Honey Badger. So we're going to start here with the splitters since that's the first thing we got and the thing I'm most concerned about for timing. So as you can see here, we have the APR splitter that we're going to be installing on the front of the Honey Badger. Uh, based on what I can see, it looks like the best way to go is to take off the whole belly pan uh, front splitter and then the front fascia. I want to attach the splitter to the whole belly pan for added stability, so I'm going to go that route. So we're going to first go underneath the car and disconnect the belly pan from everything, and then once that's disconnected, we can disconnect the top of the front fascia up here, and then that should be able to just slide the whole unit off. So let's go do that. I think we're ready to take the front bumper off here. We got a couple of different bolts we need to take care of. Uh, we're gonna have these guys up front right here. There's, uh, I believe, six of them, as well as there's a little hin bolt underneath here. You can see that, that little guy. And then there's one more bolt that is the absolute uh, fun one to get out, to say it without swearing. this on camera it looks like decent but the only way to get this one out I think is to remove the fender line or at least mostly remove it like I did so this is a seven millimeter the ones up there appear to be eight but uh, I found I already did the other side and I found I just put a, a seven millimeter socket on a quarter inch ratchet and was able to get it out very meticulously uh, I just loosened it and then I did the rest by hand so let's go ahead and do that So we got the splitter off and we've put or we've got the front bumper off and we've now put it on top of the splitter getting ready to start drilling the holes of interesting note is I do it looks like this splitter is not specifically uh, meant to run with the 350R uh, OEM chin splitter as you can see here I have it as far forward or as far back so that the OEM splitter doesn't hang over and it's not actually equal right here. So have to either make the decision to allow this part of the chin splitter of the OEM one to hang over or to slide it back. My plan is this is a cheaper piece than the OEM splitter. As most of you, if you're watching this, probably know this is a $900 to $1,300 part depending on how and when you get it. Uh, where this is about $385, if I remember correctly. So I think I'm going to take the risk on this guy here and have this be what takes the brunt of damage, as well as the further it sticks out, the more aggressive it is. Whether or not that's a good thing, not entirely sure. We'll make a chance, or we'll take a, a chance on this one and see how it goes. And with the next one, I might contact APR and see if they can create one that covers this gap. Being that this car is tracked so much and so heavily, I don't foresee this thing lasting really that long to begin with, maybe a year or two at most, so we'll see. Um, but uh, So next step, I guess, is going to be we need to mark, uh, as this is not a fully plug-and-play application, as you can see under here, we have this ducting that's built into the OEM belly pan, and I don't really want to lose that. So my plan is to mark off where... I need to cut and then cut this part of it out to allow the airflow to come through using a Dremel tool. So that's going to be what I'm doing next is I'm going to mark these areas out and then we're going to Dremel. Alright so here's my very simple way to cut out uh, the airflow duct here off the bottom splitter slash belly pan. So what I've done is I've placed two pieces of tape on the edges here. These go uh, to show me where the 
where on the bottom splitter here the air duct is. And then here I've put a little line, as you can see, that starts where the splitter is uh, on the <clears throat> actual belly pan, and this will tell me where I need to measure from. So then when I pull it off, I will just take a tape measure and I will measure from here to down there where I need to stop, do the same over there, and then I will just cut that. I will transfer that onto here and cut it out. Should be nice and easy. All right, so I got it marked out here where I'm gonna cut. I've, uh, one, used this painter's tape to A, protect the finish as the blade comes through. It'll help prevent tear out, as well as it gave me a nice uh, material to mark my lines onto where I've cut. So you'll see here I've marked a line. Ooh, the lighting's making it hard to see. I've marked a line going this way, and then going this way, and I'm going to cut this uh, weird rectangle out on both sides. To do that, what I did is I measured the distance between this guy and this guy, uh, and then I, I used that over here to measure my starting point here and my point here. To find the true center of the splitter, I just took the total length, cut it in half, marked it right here. So you can see there's a very tiny little mark. So I went 11 and 3 quarter inches this way, 11 and 3 quarter inches this way. I then came over here and measured the distance from here to here. Came back over here, applied that to here. And then in order to get the angle I needed, I measured the distance straight down from, uh, I think it's about right here, over to here. And that'll give me the cut I need for that or the, the angle, because then what I did is I took this and I, I used my speed square here to draw a line at the depth I needed. This is, I think, about a five and a quarter inches uh, on my placement of splitters, so keep that in mind, but five and a quarter inches down. I then drew a line here and drew that straight across, so that gives me my total reference point here. So then I just needed to figure out what's the width between this corner and this point here. So that's what I went over and I measured here, down here. I measured from here to here. I think it was about 10 inches if I remember correctly. So then I measured 10 inches from here and ended up being on this point on the line. And then I got my um, a straight edge and I drew this line from this point to this point and that's how I triangulated that angle. got the splitter installed on the bottom of the OEM splitter and belly pan and now it's time to put in our supports. My, There's not really a set way to do this from what I'm able to gather. The only thing I noticed is when I looked at their pictures, we, they were about even between what looked like this, uh, this piece of plastic and the stripe here. So what I did is I measured the distance from the plastic to the edge of the stripe cut it in half and marked it. And then I did the same for the other side. And then as far as placement, I just marked where it looked like if it was mostly straight, the, the bar would be going down at the angle that would land it in the middle of this distance. I'm not gonna measure this distance until I get this in. I can tighten it down and adjust from there. So I've marked here on both sides where I plan to drill and I've grabbed a 13 16 foot drill bit and I guess it's time to go for it. All right, 
So I actually ended up installing these off camera just because I had no way to easily uh, show anything because of the way I had access to it. It was a huge, huge uh, pain to get access. I tried to get rid of this thing, but I couldn't figure out how to easily. I removed all the little plastic push pins, and then I started to remove this, and it just re I just realized pretty quickly it was going to be pretty cumbersome. So what I ended up doing was using a pair of needle nose to gently and carefully and painstakingly put the washer on top, and then I took a flathead screwdriver with double-sided tape, put the nut on that, uh, put it on top of that and started to thread it from the other side in order to get that on. Once I got it threaded, I was able to do the rest by slipping a eight millimeter wrench over. Pretty easy, just very slow and lots of trial and error. All right, now that we got the front on or the, the top parts on, I have gone ahead and measured for the bottom. What I ended up doing is because there's no real good place on the splitter to measure from where you can be consistent easily, I should say, be consistent on both sides. What I actually ended up doing was I found the middle here. Uh, that's pretty easy. I mean, I might be off, but based on what I was able to gather, I just measured halfway between the edge of the L and the edge of the E. And then I measured an equal distance to here. I, and then for its depth, I just went for halfway between the edge of the black and the edge of the splitter, which I think was like an inch and a half-ish. So an inch and a half back and then 11 and a half inches to each side. And when I mocked them up, they looked fairly consistent with each other, at least enough for me. Um, if they're off, I'm not able to tell. So that's good enough for me. All right, so now I'm gonna drill these holes and bolt it together. guys I'm making a quick video after the fact because when I went back and started editing the video I realized there were some pieces missing and I felt like it was a it was weird to just end it that way so we're gonna it's been a couple weeks and there are some changes that I'd like to talk about but I need to test them further so please ignore them like the caulking and the ceiling on the bottom and stuff like that well the two things I want to add that I I did after the after the video that for whatever reason I, I don't have on camera are uh, gonna be these little splitter guards if you will so I know a lot of people in the Mustang community and the GT350 community are using ZL1 add-on splitter guards the one problem I have with those is they stick down quite a bit and when you're only I think it's like three and a half inches of ground clearance I was worried about losing that ground clearance which proved to be true getting into the trailer as well as they they screw in and the only way they're useful on this splitter is if you go to the leading edge and that means I would have a bolt sticking out right here and I just wasn't super into that idea. So I went to the hardware store and grabbed some nylon furniture movers, cut the metal off and then epoxied them. It actually worked okay my first track day. I would not uh, recommend this solution if you're going to depend on it for an entire year or season. You're going to be replacing those so I'm still looking. So. Uh, just keep in mind that if you don't put something like that on your car, you will shear the bolts uh, off the bottom of your splitter if you're lowered like I am and you're pushing your car hard with our compound tires. So just keep that in mind. The second was, I'll throw a video in here showing the difference, but when I got this all assembled and put back on the car, I could push right here and it was flexing the whole splitter. And that's because the, the there was a bolt back here and then there was one over here and it left this whole region... Uh, Un unsecured there were no bolts because of the the fact that obviously right here there are no mounting bolts for the OEM splitter or the belly pan so what I did actually is I when the wheel liner was back I added two more bolts I will try to show them to you um, here where my finger is 
and then a little bit further over here. So here and here. Uh, it, they're nothing special. It's just a bolt and a big old washer with a nut on the other side of it. But it added just a little bit more stability. What I was actually most worried about is this thing is not coming off if you use the OEM belly pan uh, places and your down support bars here, your front front rods are secure. As long as all those are done, it's not coming off. But what I was worried about was flex because when the wind is hitting this thing at 130 plus miles an hour, you don't want this to flex and, cr and create a bigger gap here and then allow more air and put more downward pressure and it just all increases, which I'll show the before and the after video. You'll see that there's a lot less flex. So I highly recommend doing something like that. All right, guys, I'll have details on some of the changes I've done once I verify that they actually work and some you know, thoughts on the, ins or thoughts on the performance on that stuff coming soon. In the meantime, here's some slow-mo cuts of what it looks like in real life and with, from more angles. If you have any questions or any comments, please shoot me a, a message or drop me a comment or check out my Mustang 6G uh, journal and let me know. I'll get back to you. Thanks, guys. and compounds. So I, I added those so that the flex